Okay. Great. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to uh, begin the regular meeting of the East Lyme Board of Finance. Today is Wednesday, July 14th, 2021. And if I can ask you to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you very much. With that, we'll move on to delegations. Um, I see we have the auditors here this evening and a member from the Board of Ed. Would anybody like to address the Board of Finance before we start with our presentation? Okay, seeing no hands, we'll move on right to the presentation this evening from CLA, our financial auditors. Coming here? Yes, please. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Ron Nosick. I'm the engagement principal for Clifton Larson Allen, uh, formerly Bloom Shapiro, um, who, who was actually hired to do the audit, and uh, <coughs> things changed for, for Matt and I. Matt is, uh, was the engagement director, uh, so he really ran the day to day, if you will, uh, during the audit engagement and was the primary interface between uh, the, the finance department and the school, school uh, board of education's finance folks. Um, I'm going to go through a, a presentation tonight. You have the photos of the slide deck um, in front of you. I can provide you with, with uh, a PDF version of the slide deck. Uh, send it tomorrow morning if you want it for, for other purposes, but I, I wasn't sure what the technology was. Uh, here uh, insofar as being able to project it and if you could all see it tonight so I just figured better to put it in a handout so um, <clears throat> we'll dive right into this uh, from an agenda perspective what I'm going to go over are, are the terms of the engagement really what it what it was that you hired us to do uh, what the reporting results were relative to uh, the audit itself so at the end of the performance of all of our procedures clearly we're issuing reports relative to certain criteria that we're required to report to you on uh, so I'll go I'll go over all of those results I'll go over some very limited financial highlights uh, you know we're, we're at 45 50,000 feet relative to these It'll, they'll primarily be focused on the general fund uh, and your debt position as of June 30 uh, then I'm just going to really bring your attention to what are required communications that you have already received in a letter that was uh, that, that was uh, provided along with the financial statements when they were issued. Um, those are required communications that the AICPA requires us to, to, to provide to you. The topical format that's in there, the things we talk about, uh, are not chosen by, by, by the audit firm. They are required by AICPA, all of them. Uh, and I'm just going to go through those uh, relative to this um, presentation as to what they really mean, what they're trying to get at, if you will. So <clears throat> the terms of the engagement we're actually performing an audit and, and all audits in the state of Connecticut for governmental entities are performed uh, under generally accepted accounting principles, gen, uh, governmental generally accepted accounting principles, and then we're also doing work under uniform guidance, which is formerly federal single audit and the Connecticut state single audit as well. And we've got reporting criteria relative to all for, if you will, of, of, of that oversight um, relative to the performance of the engagement. Our audit under generally accepted accounting principles is the primary audit, and the opinion that we issue under, under generally accepted accounting principles is page one of the bound document that you receive. So that's the primary opinion on the financial statements. Everything else is, is relative to some other facet, be it internal controls or compliance over the organization itself or over major federal programs or major state programs. And again, I'll, I'll get into that um, as we go through the results. Uh, but those, uh, that, th those two or three things actually take up the first few slides relative to terms of the engagement. But So from um, the governmental 
gov governmental uh, perspective, that report is contained in both your federal and state single audit reports, and what we're required to report to you there is uh, in, in relative to internal control over the organization itself, so over the financial reporting operation of the organization, and then also any compliance matters that exist. Uh, these tend to be like debt covenants or things of that nature that if there were a violation of that compliance requirement, in our mind, it may be deemed material to the financial statements. Under the two single audit acts, federal single audit act, state single audit act, it's kind of the same thing. We're required to report to you on internal controls, but the controls that we're looking at relate only to the major programs that were selected for testing. And there are certain criteria that we have to follow in order to determine what programs are actually selected for testing. We're not just picking them out of the air. And then uh, relative to both single audits, we actually issue an opinion on compliance relative to the uh, compliance requirements over those major programs. So <clears throat> again, I'll, I'll go over all of those results. So under uh, generally accepted accounting principles, again, the primary opinion, we've issued unmodified opinions, and I'll explain that in a second. Uh, and those are on pages one through three of the bound document uh, that contain the financial statements. So we've issued unmodified, unmodified opinions of the financial statements, which basically says, in our opinion, they fairly represent the financial position and results of operations of, of all of the major funds and the aggregate remaining funds and the governmental activities and the business type activities of, of, of the entity. So when I, when I refer to opinions, we actually issue an opinion on all of your governmental act activities consolidated into one column, if you will all of your business type activities consolidated into one column. Those are exhibits one and two of the financial statements. Then you get into the fund-based financial statements, and those are separated by major fund and aggregate non-major fund, and we issue opinions on all of the major funds separately. So that is, though, though, that audit is not performed relative from a materiality perspective on anything other than the major column that you're looking at and or the aggregate information. <clears throat> that remains in the non-major programs. So those unmodified opinions are on all of the opinion units that we've issued opinions on relative to these financial statements. Under governmental auditing standards, and the, the government, the, that, that, the, the acronym is GAGUS. I, I don't particularly like using that acronym, um, but it, it's commonly referred to as Yellow Book. So from, from this point forward, I'll refer to it as Yellow Book. Again, as I, I said a few minutes ago, we are required to report to you on internal control over financial reporting, and we report to you on compliance with laws, regulations, contracts, and grants uh, relative to the organization as a whole. So relative to our, you know, related to those two, two matters, we did have a deficiency in, in internal control that we considered to be a material weakness uh, that was identified and reported in both the uh, federal single audit and the state single audit in what is referred to as the Yellow Book Report. Uh, and it was also presented in the uh, schedule of findings and question costs as finding 2020-001 and it related to financial reporting accuracy and audit adjustments that, that were proposed relative to the performance of our engagement um, as it relates to the financial statements. Relative to compliance with laws and regulations, there, there were no instances of non-compliance that were detected during the performance of our procedures, so uh, that the report relative to compliance simply states that, that there was nothing that was um, detected during the performance of our work. Under uniform guidance, uh, first, uh, in federal single audit, again, same thing, uh, internal controls, but again, that only relates to the major programs that were, were selected for testing here um, in town. Uh, there were only two major programs this year, the child nutrition cluster and the special education cluster. So all of our federal single audit work actually took place over at the Board of Education. Uh, it did not encompass the, the, the town finance function, if you will. Uh, and if you're, if you're on that slide, um, I think we're on, uh, yeah, we're on uh, slide eight, if you will. Um, 
as I said earlier, we issue an opinion on compliance relative to, to federal and state single audit. So we did issue an unmodified opinion. So there were no, we did not detect any compliance violations relative to those two major programs that we tested um, during the federal single audit work. Relative to internal controls, there was a deficiency in internal, uh, under internal controls that we deemed to be a significant deficiency. When you, when you look at internal control matters, um, it, it, um, basically, if it's if it's minor, you know, for lack of a better term, it's going to appear in your management advisory letter. If it's a significant deficiency, that's next level up. It's going to be in this yellow book report. Uh, or federal single audit report and then the the, the biggest uh, the highest level is material weakness which we talked about in the yellow book report so there was a deficiency in internal control uh, relative to the federal single audit that had to do with procurement standards um, I will it, it, it you know admittedly those standards they changed uh, they were effective for June 30 19 fiscal year um, and the federal government uh, the General Accounting Office, I think, did everything they could to make them as complicated as they could, quite frankly. Um, and, and I think for for the town to come into compliance with that requirement, it's only going to take some tweaking. I don't think that, that that entire policy needs to be rewritten by any means. Uh, a lot of it has to do with simple um, threshold criteria as to what you have to do based on the level of, of uh, uh, procurement that you're, you're, you're undertaking at that point in time. Under state single audit, uh, again, same thing. Uh, there was only one, uh, one program that was selected as a major program. It was the drinking water program. Uh, and on these two slides, we're on slide nine, uh, slide nine now. I did give you the, the, the value of expenditures in the parentheses uh, relative to those programs. And actually, in, in both cases, um, you know, federal single audit, I, I, were we low risk or high risk in federal single audit? So we, were, we would be required to, to, to select programs uh, that got us to at least 40% coverage of all federal expenditures, all federal program expenditures. I think those two programs that we tested were close to 70. Um, and although there's only one, uh, one state program that was selected, I think that's in excess of 70% of all of your, your state grant expenditures that are subject to the state single audit. So there's actually quite a bit of coverage, uh, you know, within, within the confines of, of just a few programs. So again, relative to the opinion on compliance, it was an unmodified opinion, so there were no findings relative to compliance uh, uh, over the drinking water program, and there were no deficiencies noted relative to uh, internal controls over that program as, as well. So um, that, was, uh, that was the results of, of, of state single audit. So from the reporting results perspective, that's, that's where we are. Unmodified opinions, which is the, the, the biggest thing, on the financial statements themselves. Uh, we did have an internal control over, you know, organizationally, if you will, an internal control finding, uh, and we did have an internal control finding relative to one of the um, federal single audit programs. First one being material weakness, second one being significant deficiency. Everything else was uh, without finding. So from financial highlights, and again, I'm at, 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 at a pretty high level here, I'm just really talking on, the highlights, if you will, that are often um, the attributes that the rating agencies are going to look at uh, when they're evaluating financial statements uh, on behalf of a, a, a city or town. So in the general fund, uh, on a gap basis, total revenues exceeded expenditures for the year by $2,725,214. Uh, that brought your total fund balance up to ten million one twenty five one fifty four as of June 30. An assigned fund balance as of June 30 was 8196555 so almost almost 8.2 million. That's a big number relative to an attribute that the rating agencies look at. Uh, the guidance right now, although that's clearly going to be subject to change after the impacts of COVID have all been absorbed uh, throughout the country, but uh, that, that guidance comes from um, GFOA. It, it sits now at about seven and a half to 15% is the recommendation. So you're, you're, you're darn close to smack dab 
uh, in the middle of that, uh, even a little bit on the higher side of middle. So uh, that, that's certainly in a good position where that 8.196 or 8.2 million approximately sits is 11.3% uh, of your total expenditures in operating transfers out on a budgetary basis. So it, it, it clearly changes every year based on your budget, but typically in, in governments in New England, uh, governmental budgets don't change a whole heck of a lot year over year. Um, we'd probably have you know, massive tax revolt if, 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 if they were to change on any significant basis. On a budgetary basis, uh, and this actually is uh, relative to financial statements, this is, this is considered RSI. This is not presented as one of the primary uh, financial statements, your budgetary statement. But to me, um, you know, when I look at uh, a municipality, that, that's an important statement to look at because it, it tells me how, how realistic is the budgeting process um, that goes on on an annual basis and uh, how well monitored is, is the process as it goes through the year. Um, so it, in, in relation to this budgetary statement as uh, the June 30, 2020 uh, financials, uh, actual budgetary revenues received exceeded budgetary estimates by um, $1.447 million and actual budgetary expenditures came in under planned expenditure appropriations by about one point a little over 1.6 million dollars so overall what you you know add you really just adding those two numbers up you you create a budgetary surplus of, of 2.7 million a little over 2.7 million but <clears throat> when you look at that variance that budget to actual variance what it tells me, and it might tell you something completely different, but what it tells me is from a, from a revenue perspective, uh, the budget was set in, with realistic goals, not um, you know, pie in the sky in order to keep mill rate down, and then you're missing your revenue uh, projections by, by hundreds of thousands of dollars. From the expenditure side, um, it clearly represents that there's tight control uh, relative to what's going on and how expenditures are made here. Um, there were some additional appropriations made during the year, uh, relatively minor to the overall magnitude of the budget itself, but all of your budgetary departments <coughs> were, were under appropriation um, and, and not by a little, not by, not by a few dollars. You know? And, and uh, given what transpired last year, um, that, that's pretty remarkable, to be quite honest with you, especially as it relates to like public safety and things of that, th things of that, uh, that nature. The next few slides are really just the, the snapshot, if you will, of, of the governmental balance sheet and the governmental statement of operations. Um, uh, as, as a document I, I gave the finance director earlier, this too, you probably need the Hubble telescope to, to take a look at any of it. Um, but they are in your financial statements. Most of what I spoke to uh, this evening uh, relative to financial information is all peeling off of these two statements and, and then uh, your budgetary statement, which is the third statement that's presented um, in this packet. So if you jump up uh, to slide 14 in here, I just wanted to um, go through uh, really in brief uh, what your long-term liabilities look like as of June 30, because that's that's another primary area. And actually, nowadays, when you go through a rating, um, one of the first things they look at are what's your pension liability, what's your OPEB liability, what's your you know what's your what's your burden on debt relative to general obligation bonds. Um, so most of my focus here will, will, will really be on those, the, the pension and OPEB plans. But so long-term liabilities overall, you, you increase by almost $14 million during the year, but you had a $17 million issuance. So that, that would have been expected and should have been expected uh, relative to overall increase uh, year over year. Uh, if you look at this uh, on this slide 14, and, and this, this the snapshot of the financial information is right out of the notes of the financial statement as well. You see your OPEB liability and the net pension liability down at the bottom. Uh, the net pension liability at June 30 was 5,732,614. That actually decreased over year over year by about uh, 543,000. 
the good thing with that, that plan is, is funded right now at the end of June 30, 2020, and I don't expect, given what market the market has done uh, from July 1, uh, 20 to June 30, 21, uh, I don't expect that to change. It probably went up some more, but you're 81.86% funded in that plan, which um, you know, I never like to make comparisons community to community because factors are different in every community. But um, that's a pretty high funded percentage uh, here in New England. Uh, so um, th that's in pretty good shape. If you flip the page, and we unfortunately have to talk about the OPEB liability, that liability as of June 30 is nine million four seventy four six ninety eight, and and there is no funding relative to that plan as, as it exists at June 30, 2020. So there is no trust in place where you're accumulating funds um, in order to pay this liability and accumulating funds in order to get it to uh, some some level of fully funded status. So. Um, Again, relative, and the only reason I bring it to your attention is, is relative to rating agencies, they're, they're, they're looking at that pretty diligently these days because those liabilities are quite significant uh, throughout the country, um, New England in particular, New England and California, but um, they are significant, and uh, I don't want to knock on the rating agencies, but but by the nature of what they do and how they assess risk, they're looking for reasons to downgrade you, not upgrade you. Fifteen years ago, it was the other way around, but uh, that's not the case any longer. So the next slide, slide 16, are, are those required communications <coughs> that we talked about or that I, I, I mentioned. Um, and again, I'm just going to go through these, you know, bullet by bullet, you know, probably 10 seconds, if, if not less, on each bullet. I just want you to understand <coughs> what it's all about. Um, the letter itself you have, and you can read through them. There's a little more detail uh, in those. But I can tell you globally what all these communications are about is if, if there were problems relative to the audit, if there were significant corrections that had to be made relative to the audit, or if there is bias that is being um, pursued by management relative to the financial statement. So is, is management trying to make the financial statement look better than it really is, or perhaps make it look worse than it really is? Uh, all of these criteria are, in theory, supposed <coughs> to capture what would be the attributes of those circumstances. Uh, and make you aware of them, you, those charged with governance. Um, you know, we could, if, if there were problems, um, which, which there are not, but, but uh, really, especially relative to bias, but uh, if there were, we could work with you relative to what we felt as though the reaction should be uh, by those charged with governance. Uh, but in the end, we, we're presenting this information to you for you to do what you deem fit with that information. So the qualitative aspects uh, of accounting practices, if, if management is going, going to um, try to try to manipulate the financial statements, that's the topical area that it's going to happen under because that's where all your estimates lie. And there are estimates embedded in every financial statement, be it an allowance for doubtful accounts, your net pension liability is an estimate, your OPEB liability is an estimate. So if, if there are bias uh, relative to those estimates, they're relatively easy, uh, easy to hide uh, if, if your auditors are asleep um, and, and, you know, others, those charged with governance don't really understand where this information is coming from and you're just taking it for granted that uh, the management knows what they're doing and is doing, doing the appropriate, me or taking the appropriate measures. Uh, but there were no indications relative to the estimates that exist and are embedded in your financial statements that uh, suggested there were any bias whatsoever that, that were being in, uh, trying to be influenced. Uh, we would talk to you about difficulties encountered in performing the audit. Uh, typically what these are uh, from a topical perspective would be if, you know, if we were asking for information and, and uh, management was refusing to provide that information. 
<coughs> or uh, they were only providing 50% of what we we're asking for and things of that nature, then we would report that to you because clearly that may be an indication that there's a problem. There's something we've asked for that they don't want us to see. But uh, again, there were no, no issues relative to that. Uh, uncorrected misstatements, uh, these, these again would, uh, would present bias because it would be uh, an audit adjustment that, that we presented uh, based on the performance of our procedures. We presented to management and management said, no, we're not going to book that. Or perhaps a, a more egregious scenario of, of, of bias would be if there were 15 adjustments that we presented uh, for posting in order to, to, what we, to, to correct what we felt were errors embedded in the financial statements. And seven of them made the financial statements look better, and eight of them made, made the financial statements look worse. And management said, you were going to post these seven, but we're not going to post these eight. Well, clearly, that, that we, we, you chuckle, but I've seen it. <laughs> these gray hairs will tell you I've seen a lot. But, but, uh, but you know, so again, nothing of that nature occurred here. Uh, corrected misstatements. There were corrected misstatements. They are contained in that communication that we provided you. Uh, so these were things that we came up uh, and presented to management based on the performance of our procedures. Management agreed and posted those to the financial statements. So they, 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 they did affect the financial statements that you're looking at. Um, we, you know, I'm not going to blame AICPA for this, but there was some guidance that came out it was probably about five or six years ago that, that basically said if, if, if the, the overall total of, of all your posted audit adjustments reach an order of magnitude that is material uh, in, in, the, in the mind of the, the auditors, then you're going to have a material weakness. And the, the, the corrected misstatements that we had are what drove that, that first finding that I talked about earlier. So um, that's, you know, that's where they come from. But we, they are... Management did agree to all those, posted all those, and, and they are presented to you in that communication. <clears throat> Disagreements with management, uh, clearly we would want to communicate those to you. There were none. Uh, management representations, uh, all we're doing there is, is communicating to you that we do, in fact, ask management to sign off, to take responsibility for these financial statements once they're all done. Actually, that's the last thing that we do. And if management does not get us a representation letter back, the financial statements aren't leaving our door. So um, th that is an important uh, facet of uh, an evidential matter that we collect from management relative to the audit. Management consultations with other independent accountants, what we would be basically uh, if, if there were a disagreement and, and management went to another accounting firm to get their opinion, um, we would be compelled and, and required to communicate that to you. Um, there were no, no instances of that that, that that occurred, but that's what that's about. Uh, significant issues discussed with management prior to the engagement. We have communications with management all throughout the year. Uh, what we would be required to communicate to you relative to these, if there were if there were communications that took place, whereby the results of of our conclusions or the results of what we agreed to, to do, uh, were, you know, our our hiring was was subject to that to to, to where we fell on uh, on a question or or something of that nature. So um, this could be, you know construed as opinion shopping or something of that nature. And we would be compelled to communicate to you nothing of that, uh, nothing of that nature took place. Uh, significant findings that were discussed or subject to correspondence with management. We have provided you, uh, and we discussed tonight, two of the findings that relate to reported findings. There was an advisory letter that was also issued that uh, just tends to be more in the nature of best practices or that we see something that uh, is, a, is an internal control, but we think maybe it could be strengthened, or maybe there's a more efficient way to do this. So um, those are things that we just feel uh, compelled to report to management. Uh, we're not required to report them to you because they don't represent a material weakness or a significant deficiency or anything of that nature. Other findings or issues, there are, there are none, and, and there were none that we needed to report. And then uh, the last thing in there is really just telling you what all of the stuff is behind 
the footnotes to the financial statements, uh, what it is and and uh, what level of uh, uh, you know comfort we're providing you relative to that information that's that's related to our opinion. So, so that's everything. The last slide in there is is my contact information and Matt's contact information. Uh, we're more than happy to to take calls directly, or if you want to filter them through the finance department or the board uh, board of education finance group, um, that that can tend to be a more efficient mechanism, but um, either way, it, it, it's up to you. It's at your discretion. So I'll take any questions you might have. Okay, thank you for the presentation, Mr. Yep. Nasek. Um, certainly there's a lot of information here with the management advisory letter, the communication letter, the findings. Um, this is a nice uh, summarized version of all the information that you've presented to us previously, but I'd like to just start by distilling this down a little bit further okay. um, and just correct me if I'm not understanding the key takeaways from this presentation, please. Okay. And then after I we get our arms around that distilled information, then I'm going to open it up to the floor to ask the board members uh, to, to ask you specific questions. Um, so one... The audit is just a sampling of data. Certainly, it's not a forensic audit. So everything that you've noted in your audit is based on your findings from a sampling of data. That's, that's, that's somewhat accurate. Um, an audit is, is not just uh, purely sampling, uh, sampling transactions or sampling data. Uh, there's a lot of other procedures that we perform be they analytical, be they predictive in nature, uh, and compare prediction, um, you know, as long as the underlying data is outside of the accounting system that we can grab and help formulate uh, a, a valid prediction, we can use comparative, what is our prediction, what, what actually transpired, uh, that is actually high level uh, substantive matter. Um, so it's it's not just about sampling. There's there's quite a bit more work that goes in. Probably, um, I would suggest that the the greatest attribute that transpires during the course of an audit um, has to do with its name, auditory. Uh, it's 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 discussion. It's communication. It's understanding uh, that we gain from management, from discussions from management, and um, those are all important facets too. So you're you're. You have a component pa that, that is correct. Partially yes. correct. Okay. Yes. So if I'm hearing correctly in your presentation, you were making a representation to us that this town is um, fiscally healthy based on, say, the 81% pension liability that, that, uh, that we have. I would say I, what I represented to you is that your pension plan is, is fiscally healthy. And your general fund, based on the level of fund balance, is fiscally healthy. Mm -hmm. The fact that it's an unmodified opinion, uh, not a going concern opinion, would indicate that in our in in our opinion, and that's part of our professional standard. We've uh, this this is going to sound weak, but this is this is the standard uh, from the date of that financial statement, um, which isn't that long ago. We what we are. Uh, expressing is our belief that the organization will continue at least one more year from the date of that opinion. Okay, very good. Um, so in the report, there seems to be three different uh, levels of findings, a deficiency, a significant deficiency, and a material weakness. Is that your grading system, so to speak? No, that, that is, those, those terms are by standard. Um, and, and a deficiency actually of all of the two of the three um, has a pretty broad span as to what it could encompass um, in in our mind in Matt and mine's in Matt and my mind here uh, for the audit of June 30 2020 we had a significant deficiency we had a material weakness we did not have any other deficiencies. We do have advisory comments that we feel as though are best practices to tighten things up. So material weakness would be the most serious correct. finding. That's correct. And we have one in the financial reporting correct. area. Correct. For the town or the town and the Board of Education? It, it, you know, the, it, really, it really covers both. Um, it doesn't, 
it, it, it doesn't bifurcate between the two because the financial statements and, and in particular, right, the general fund encompasses the Board of Education as well. Okay. Um, I don't know off the top of my head if, if the audit adjustments, uh, I, I would imagine they, they spanned over both, both, you know, both board and, yeah, okay, all right. Okay, thank you for that. And just finally, if you could explain to our board members the significance of a material weakness finding. What does that mean? What does that expose our town to, if anything? What, what, it, what it means uh, by standard is that the internal controls that are in place, in our opinion, um, are not sufficient in order to detect a material misstatement to the financial statements in the normal course of management performing its functions. Um, and I think it, you know, it's, you know, the, the, the prima facie evidence, I think, is the fact that these were audit adjustments that, that were brought forward. So, you know, we're working from what are closed trial balance, uh, trial balance reports. Uh, we don't, we, we don't get us a, a set of financial statements from management. Uh, to be honest with you, I do, I think, 25 audit engagements for municipalities and I received two sets of financial statements. So it's a, it's quite a rarity for a municipality um, for management's, uh, you know, finance function to be issuing financial statements to be putting that all together. There's simply not the manpower in place to do all of that. Um, so uh, we get trial balances and we've got to get to a point where we're comfortable with what we're going to put an opinion on. Um, and so that's, you know, when we're rolling up our sleeves and digging pretty deep um, in order to make sure we got things accurate, and, you know, that, that's, that's where audit adjustments come out of. Okay, very good, thank you. So I, I do have a, a few questions, but I'm going to give the other board members an opportunity. Um, if everyone's had a chance to go through all the documents, I'm, I'm sure there's a few questions from our board members. Uh, would anybody like to go first? I have a question. Sure. So, um, you say there's a material uh, weakness. Would that impact the um, bond rating or ability to get favorable um, interest rates when we go out to bond? I have never seen uh, any kind of control deficiency impact uh, a rating, to be, to be honest. Um, but again, I, I'm I'm not on Fitch. I'm not on S and P. They they may factor uh, those things in, um, you know, related to ratings, but um, I, I, I can't say that I've ever seen a circumstance where um, that would be the case if, if there were fraud, uh, if you would, were undertaking some kind of a fraud investigation, that might, but, um, but in, in the case of a material weakness relative to internal controls, I, I haven't seen it. Okay, thank you. Anything else, Sam? Not right now. Not right oh. now. And Santoro, do you have questions for no. Mr. Um, Nosek? Yeah, I guess since we're on the, the topic of the material weakness, um, I guess would it be appropriate at, at this point to, to discuss in some detail that particular weakness and what the recommendation is? I mean, we have the in our letter, um, you're, you know, we have um, 13 items identified basically and then some recommenda and recommendations for each of them. So, um, I mean, since it seems to be taking on a more serious um, you know, el element, we'll say, would it be okay for you to go through what, 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 what caused this, to, um, this material weakness? Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's relatively simple and I discussed it earlier is if, if you've got that communication in front of you, yes. uh, those audit adjustments are total. You see the total value of, of, of what was presented as, as needed corrections to the financial statements. If those were $40,000, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Um, but when they get to, to an order of magnitude, um, of, of certain level, then, then we're, we're kind of boxed in professionally. Um, 
if we were not to present it as a material weakness and this engagement were reviewed in a peer review, you know, I'll be retired, but Matt's, Matt's going to have a lot to answer to. <laughs> general question also about um, I guess it the uh, issue arose of, by way of Board of Education and um, the uh, perhaps one of the, a program of I guess reporting about um, it was federal money a federal grant was that issue and um, the, there's a recommendation to make some some changes to purchasing policy and to add some provisions um, to reference, let's say, a, co a current code of federal regulations. So, right. Um, do you, uh, I've actually, I helped with the purchasing policy, so does this one plot my eye? Mm -hmm. So um, uh, there are, I mean, I suppose there are some, um, uh, there might be a good model of, from another town to look at for that. I actually just came across one by rand randomly today from the town of Avon. And they actually, I don't know if they're a client, but. They are. They are. Because they are, yeah. it was interesting. I've never seen anything like this. They actually had in the policy that they had been audited and that they, um, <laughs> they actually wrote that in the policy language. So it was interesting. But I guess um, this might be a trend. Is it a, new, a newer trend to incorporate that language? Well, in, in the policy itself? Yes, because. Um, no. It's, I mean, I had, I had not seen specific reference to the Code of Federal Regulations, in particular the, the sections that you cite, um, really, and uh, looking at a number of policies. And most of the time the policies are written um, to uh, deal with the fact that depending on the source <coughs> of revenue for a particular procurement, that um, there may be a, a variety of applicable laws. So it could be right. local, it could be the state, it could be federal if they're, you know, whatever, and that, and we have that language in our policy. We actually have that in there. So, I mean, I think we're, you know, sort of legally covered, if you will, if I can say that. But, um, but so it's sort of interesting to me that there's a, a specific, you know, p uh, provision um, that m might be necessary. But that's, you know, we're, our policy is open to, to change over time. So. Yeah, we ha I don't, have you provided the checklist? We, we have a checklist that we can provide that, Okay. that walks our clients yeah. through what the requirements are relative to, okay. to the procurement requirements and yeah. again I, I I could be wrong I, I don't think it's anything more than some tweaks here yes um, and that's what it looked like in that, in that yeah housing yeah question. yeah okay well that's great that would be helpful if there's any other but I I did happen to see that they actually and I thought that I, I had a connecting the dots for they're, they're your client maybe <laughs> so okay that's great. I don't know that I'd put into a policy that they were audited. <laughs> I know, but it was interesting that that was your recommendation, and they actually write, they actually wrote okay. that language in there. So just to really cover themselves, I guess. So thanks. That's it for now. I have other questions, but I'll come back later. Are you sure, Ann? Yeah. You, um, you don't want to just roll through your uh, questions? Well, I'll just wait. I will wait. Yeah, I'll wait. Thank okay. you. I'm good for it. You good, John? Questions? Uh, just a couple of things. In the letter to the Board of Finance, which I have in front of me, the uh, 12 or 13 recommendations that Ann Santoro alluded to, uh, are they be are they being addressed now? Are they in a process of being addressed? And if so, is there a time limit where they have to be addressed? I don't know if they're being addressed at the, at this point. Um, you'd have to. You know, ask ask your management. Okay. Um, there are relative to recommendations. There are no time frames. Um, you know, they're not going to come out of the letter until they are adequately addressed. Right. <clears throat> uh, but um, you know, we're not. You know, we. You know, I, I don't mean to be blunt, but we weren't hired to to implement all of these things. Um, I, I know. Yeah. We can help but right. we would have to be asked to help. <laughs> okay, one other question. Uh, I know you said earlier that the, uh, it's hard to compare towns. Mm -hmm. uh, and from what you've been saying, East Lime is in pretty good financial shape. 
Well, again, what I said tonight was your pension plan is in good yeah. shape <laughs> and your general fund is in good shape. Okay. I don't want to, you know, I, I, yeah, I, I don't want to be sued for no. <laughs> saying something I didn't say. <laughs> Where I'm going with this is uh, there are several towns about the same size and if they may be financially very similar. Where is, does East Lime stack up among towns that are similar to us? Yeah. If you can answer that. Yeah, that, that, that's – Waterford is not a client of mine, but I would say, you know, from a geographic proximity, that's really your only comparative. Old Lime's too small. Yep. Uh, Budget-wise, Monville's probably the same size, but completely different demographic, which you're right. clearly aware of. Um, so, it, it, you know, that's why it's hard to, to make comparisons. Right. Um, Especially if they're not your clients, right? Well, yeah, I mean, the data is available, but um, actually at CLA, we may have some, some, some more resources in the, in the, in the couple of years to come. Um, CLA does actually capture all of this information and, and they're, they're in the process of, of trying to group it by criteria, uh, you know, and it, it you know, the easy criteria is it'll be New England, it'll be Connecticut, and it'll be southeastern Connecticut probably. Um, the more difficult criteria, I don't know how they're going to vet all of this out, um, is, you know, what, what's the per capita income in that community and what, you know, those types of things that, that dictate a 99% collection rate as opposed to a 94% collection rate. And, and, and those are, those make big differences. Um, relative to you know financial health and and uh bond ratings and 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 everything else so it is difficult okay so that's all i have right now thanks john rich yes a a, a very basic question yep the i'm good at those <laughs> 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 great because i need all the help i can get um the the term internal control how, how is that defined and how is that operationally in looking at the financials? So an internal control relative to financial reporting is something that is in place, uh, in, in, you know, the performance of a procedure by someone with the knowledge to perform that procedure to ensure that the information that moves forward from that point in time, from that st stop gate, is accurate. Um, and, and so, effectively, that's that, that's what an internal control is. Okay. So, in in terms I'm more familiar with, then you would have standard operating procedures (SOPs) that would be incorporated in manuals that would then define those internal controls and procedures. Ideally, yes. Typically, um, you know, when you see policies and procedure manuals they they do a great job of just explaining what the yeah. i'm going to you know so and so is going to do this and this right. and this and this right. they 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 often don't really go to the level of identifying the actual control because a control is different than a process um but but normally it is embedded um within those policies and procedures yeah oh, okay and then just one other question um in regards to the various points that you, you highlighted in the communication that John referred to, uh, the internal service health insurance fund deficit for the fund that I, I guess we that was when we were self-insured and that we are no longer self-insured. We've gone to Connecticut 2.0. Um, could you go a little bit more into detail about your findings with that and well wh what we're basically saying it's 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 very general in nature is you, you have to do something about that right. uh, it's either going to be absorbed back into the general fund or you know you're going to you're going to fund it in some other nature but a, a deficit can't sit on the on the balance sheet in, into perpetuity especially none is there anything else washing through there right now yeah, I mean, it, 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 right. it can't sit there in perpetuity. Someone has to take responsibility for that deficit. The the likely candidate is going to be the general fund, so the general fund is going to have to eat that. Okay, and then that way it's closed off. That's the way it, it, it gets closed, correct. Okay. Yep. 
Thank you, and and thank you for the presentation and the materials. It was sure. very clear and thank very you. well done. Yep. So I'm just reading. It says here that uh, the town did not have updated accounting policies and procedures manual. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to ask, do you know when it was like last updated? Is it like something that should be done con like a continuous process or? I don't know when it was last updated. Yeah. And that's not an, an abnormal circumstance. Um, you know, oftentimes, uh, the, all the information is available. Um, it's scattered. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're asking for, um, you know, write-up, process write-ups right now because we're scheduled to start preliminary work for the 21 audit in just a week or two. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're getting our process write-ups now. So someone has those right they go you know the, the the request gets disseminated to someone and we get information it's really the process of consolidating all that information someone evaluating it is it is it really clear is it concise can we make it better and getting it in one document so i you want it all in one place so that you yeah can look it's at it it's a I, I i give you it's a it's a it's a poor example but but it, you know if a if a bus were to roll through this room and take all of us out right now and you had to bring in a whole new finance staff tomorrow morning who would know where anything is um so you know you have to you have to have some protection relative to to that the availability of resources and information and um you know i'll go to my grave forever saying you you, you come into government to to make it better at the point that you leave government, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to leave it better than, than 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 when you walked in. So, so if somebody else comes in, they have to. Everything has to be in place, so somebody else can pick it up. Can access out it. Where? That's right. What to do and how how right. the government is actually right. being, you know, worked. In Correct. The process. Correct. Okay. Um, and then my other question was, let me see. you had a recommendation. Um, it says, uh, I'll just read. Part of it is our understanding the town and board of education are in the process of upgrading to munis due to the complexity and volume of the capital assets we recommend that the town look for a capital asset reporting mo module that will properly integrate with the new general ledger software system so my question is this capital asset reporting module you're speaking about i'm assuming that's a computer program that yeah be some type of of, of of integrated program is what we're looking for i think right now is it just excel based uh, there, there is a program. Yeah. It's not tied to the yeah. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear there's you. There's a program to capture the capital assets, but it's not tied, to, it's not integrated with the system. Okay. Thank you. I had a couple other questions. Um, one is um, for the uh, Post-employment benefit fund, mm -hmm. um, other post-employment benefit fund. So, what would be your recommendation as we go forward? Um, um, you know, as a starting point for us. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, um, and I don't mean to skirt the question, but that's that's outside of my realm of expertise. Right. Right. Um, I, I would I would talk to your financial advisor, mm -hmm. uh, and and talk to your actuaries, and and I think they're the appropriate people to get. Okay that recommendation from so um you would give a percent i mean uh working with let's say the unassigned fund balance so with that we have kind of like um you know recommendations uh financial analysts recommendations whatever um you know the seven and a half to fifteen percent so are we are we and is there any other reference you know for opeb uh for those post-employment benefit funds is there any similar kind of a, a recommendation of a percentage of you know what you owe or what you're expected to owe but again if that's out of your yeah point, well the liability is there i mean yeah, you know what the liability right. is right. and and we also know it's not not going down right um but again um your actuaries are 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 very good relative to recommendation in that nature and they they also have a lot of comparatives they can they can provide you but um you know the percentage escapes me now but i think i think it's like 75 percent and above of of a funded plan be it opeb or pension 
is deemed to be a healthy plan. And don't quote me on right, that. I would, right. I would again, would call your actuary because right. it might be 80 percent, but right. but it's, nonetheless, it's. So that's it's, what I was looking for, actually, Frank. Just some some yep. ballpark idea, and and to obviously discuss it with, uh, you know, with with others. Okay, thanks. And then, um, uh, yeah, similar, I guess, to the um, the pension, um, our pension number, 81 <coughs> percent, right? Um, okay, other question had to do with um, your recommendation, one of your last ones, about performing a fraud risk assessment and establishing um, a fraud tip hotline. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, uh, can you tell us your experience with other clients or just your thoughts on this as a, as a you know, a good thing to invest in and a useful tool? Yeah, well, you know, from our perspective, and I, I you know, I'll be, um, clear and honest with you that's a, a standing recommendation that that derived from Bloom Shapiro um, because one reason because we had the resources in our in our consulting group uh, in order to to help implement those but um, from a standards perspective it it is in fact your responsibility as those charged with governance to to evaluate where your financial statements may be subject to, to the risk of fraud, be it by uh, error or, you know, a misstatement or fraud, or, you know, whatever causes it. Um, very few organizations go through that process, but I, I think it's a highly valued process. Mm -hmm. the, the fraud tip hotline, um, you know, that's, that's quite an old one that's been knocking around for a long time, but uh, there's a lot of stati statistics out there that indicate that they're extremely valuable if 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 established and created properly mm -hmm. um we just had an incident mm -hmm. uh where a client had had one uh and we were told during our we, we do basically fraud inquiries with certain selected members of management uh, as part of our audit engagement and in this particular instance uh we were informed that the fraud tip hotline was um, monitored by someone in town hall, so it, you know it, it 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 really sort of lost its its independence, if you will, um, and so we we made a modification to that quickly. Uh, but so those you know, but those are I mean the statistics are almost off the charts relative to how effective just the the tip hotlines are uh, if if established. So. People actually use the oh yes tip hotline. Yes. So is it are the people told who could possibly use it ahead of time, like who who would have it's access part of your, to that? It's your it's part. It would be part of your personnel policy. So every employee in town hall, in the town, would know if 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 they felt uncomfortable about something that was transpiring relative, you know, be it related to fraud. Um, there's a number they can call that they are going to have in an anonymity um, related to that call. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. Okay. I suppose I'll take a turn. Um, uh, following along with those recommendations, um, you had a recommendation in here, the last one, uh, to implement a whistleblower policy. So you had mentioned earlier that there was no management issues with delivering information upon request. So this is this a particular instance where you asked for a policy and you were told that it did not exist? No, we, we no, I, I, yeah, yeah, um, we're, I mean, we, we might. Would you mind coming to the, would you mind coming to the podium and speaking into the mic? So when I read that uh, a recommendation is to institute a formal whistleblower policy, to me that means that we do not currently have one. Is that correct? That's my understanding, correct. Okay, so did you ask for one or are you assuming that it doesn't exist? 
I'm, no, I'm unclear. Have, we, we would have asked for it. Right. So you asked for it, and okay. it was not delivered, not because management was not cooperating, but just because it doesn't exist. Well, uh, management told us, no, it doesn't exist. They're cooperating, okay. right? Right. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to understand. Does this policy exist? Obviously, it does not exist. No, that's, that's all part of that same fraud mm -hmm. risk assessment policy. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm going to move on to page 10 in your presentation. Um, if you could explain to me, uh, you know, we were over budget on revenues, mm -hmm. under budget on expenses. And when I add the two numbers together, I get to $3 million. But your number that you've put in the presentation is $2,760,000. Yeah, because you had additional appropriations, which take a, take a deeper bite out of that surplus. If you look at, uh, I'm sorry, what slide are you on again? I'm on 10. Okay, if you go to slide 13. You see the appropriation of fund balance line, it's about uh, four or five up from the bottom. 175, the original. You, your original budget plan projected you were going to take 175,000 out of fund balance as if it, as if that's a revenue. You use it to balance the budget, but you never you never get a revenue out of that. You can't you can't reclassify what's already been brought into fund balance as revenue. Your additional appropriations that you made during the year brought that 175 up to 332,097. So your plan was to use 332,000 out of fund balance. It's effectively a revenue deficit, a planned revenue deficit. So mm -hmm. when you add those two numbers back out the 332, and I think you're probably going to get to um, the number that you were just yes. referring to. Yes, within a few dollars. Yeah. It does. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, are there any financial ratios that you look at during your audit <coughs> pertinent to municipalities? How is our, if you look at ratios, debt to capital, uh, debt per citizen, I don't know what you would call it in a municipality. Yeah, we, per population. We, we're, we don't typically look at those um, unless they're in information that's presented in the footnotes because we're responsible our opinion is is covering the footnotes um, we look at a lot of ratios but they're the ratios that we look at are evidential matter towards your audit so they're relevant to you and you only right. uh, simple one would be tax collection rate mm -hmm. um, you know we we have probably a 10-year history uh, and we could go back further than that if, if, if need be. All that information is out there, in, you know, in the public domain. Um, but we're looking at that from a trend perspective. Uh, and there are other things that we're calculating that we utilize as substantive matter relative to the, to the audit. But we're not looking at, you know, debt capacity ratios or, 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 you know, debt per capita or anything like that. The only thing we look at from the perspective of, of debt is your your debt burden as it relates to the state statute that tells you how much debt you can actually issue uh, and if you're bumping against that ceiling. And if you went over it, we'd have a compliance finding that um, would have been presented uh, earlier on in the evening. But we're not in that situation. No, you're not anywhere so that, close. That's why I asked. There are certain ratios and numbers that, that this board focuses on. Certainly, yep. you know, the, the uh, general fund balance is something that we focus on. We focus on... Um, the the funded uh, pension liability yep. number we fo we focus on those things but yep. I was wondering if there was any recommendations that you had for this board that we should be paying attention to relative to to your findings in the audit management letter. No, I mean you know you you we we can derive from the minutes that you're looking at budget to actual information on a monthly basis and, and you know that's clearly one of the most important if not the most important monitoring uh tools that you have as a board um you know because you can see if something is 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 spiraling out of whack uh and get to the bottom of it before it 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 really goes awry um 
but yeah, there's, there's I mean, you, you issue debt pretty far and few in between. Um, so I don't think you're, you're going to come in here one, one month and find that you're totally out of control relative to debt ratios and things of that nature. Um, I live in a couple towns over. I, 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 I know East Lyme pretty well. I think you'd have a real problem with your taxpayers if you, if you really started cranking up the debt issuance. So. Oh, you would be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, on page 16, when you were going through this uh, particular slide, you had mentioned that there was nothing uh, relative to bias here. There was no nothing that you found that would have biased, uh, you know, management would have biased you in, during the course of your audit. But your, but your recommendation um, does mention well, it doesn't specifically say forensic audit, does it? You've n you didn't make that mention here. I'm trying to. There's a, there's there's act just because I'm a CPA. There's forensic investigation. There's no such thing as a forensic audit. Actually, the the term doesn't exist um, in, in in standard language. So. So if we were to secure your services. We couldn't say we would like you to perform a forensic audit. We would have to have something specific. You could say anything you want, but we would know what you actually were referring <laughs> but to. But we, we have to set the parameters Understood. of which we would want you to, to look right. at. Is, right. is that how? That's correct. But okay. the, the, the differential is that an audit requires an, an accounting firm to issue an opinion. There's never an opinion issued on any kind of forensic work whatsoever. It is, we looked at this, and this is what we found, and that's okay. it. And the purpose of that whole process, in theory, is to support what is a future court action. So, um, you know, that's, that's why there's no such thing as a forensic audit, because there's no, no accounting firm, and the AICPA wouldn't allow any accounting firm to issue an opinion on, on a forensic investigation. Okay. I think that is all the questions that I okay. have for for you. I think I have a number of more questions for the management team here, but if, if we could finish up with the auditors. Can I just ask just another one? Um, you talking about there was absence of um, compliance. Uh, I guess we were at risk for non-compliance as it relates to federal procurement. Um, and my question is, is there any more detail as to where we were inadequate in that? I know you cite the, yeah, it's, it's, you know, the sections, but, it, you know. It's the policy. We, we can provide that. Um, it, it's really, is it all, was it all threshold, Matt? I, I, I kind of forget. Yeah, we can, we can get that for you. But t okay. typically right now, what they are are thresholds. The, the federal government created these th thresholds of, you know, many purchases. Uh, I, I forget the terminology, quite honestly, off the top of my head. Okay. Uh, so you <laughs> I can purchase it. Yeah. Okay. You're the expert in the house. So <laughs> you, <laughs> I, you, I can bring this mic no, over. <laughs> very detailed. Yes, yeah. Uh, and, and so there's certain certain thresholds that, that have to be followed. Um, and so if there's not anything in the policy, driving you to okay this is what we're looking to acquire this is this is the projected cost of that acquisition therefore we have to follow this criteria relative to that procurement there was nothing in the policy that was driving to those thresholds so that, that that's that's where the genesis of the of the the finding comes out of and based on the threshold are, are there different steps that you take or different criteria? yes yes yeah okay. yeah be a competitive bid or just a solicited bid or you an ad in the newspaper or, or call three vendors, you know, based on, you know, as you climb that ladder, it, it gets to the same way you hire us, right, through a competitive process. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, and then you had something about the um, property taxes saying that um, the allowance for uncollectible accounts was not being reviewed and modified at year end, but rather carrying the same balance as in the prior year. Yep. So my question is, so does that mean like for the property taxes, are they supposed to be like accruing interest and that's not what's being? No, there's an, al that there's an allowance applied to the receivable because you're not going to collect all of it, yeah. right? I mean, that, that's the yeah. general nature of any receivable. Um, we, 
we we did not deem the allowance to be unreasonable mm -hmm. uh, by any means. What, what we're saying is there should be a policy for you to look at it on an annual basis to make sure it makes sense to you to to, to management. Um, to be honest, you know <clears throat> the collection rate is pretty consistent here in town, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know it may not tweak a whole lot year over year ever, but you know our our, our our opinion is someone should be looking at it and just evaluating it. And maybe if if collection rates stay consistent as they have, uh, maybe it's every two years you look at it. You know, that that's that's up to management. Um, but, okay. yeah, we just think something should be in place. Okay. And one last question. Um, <clears throat> you're talking about the recording of Board of Education encumbrances in the town general ledger, and you were recommending the town move to correct this once the two systems are integrated. Um, I guess they have two different accounting systems. Or may maybe this is for Anna. Or is that something that, that is going to be happening? Is that that the two systems are going to be integrated? Yeah, that really would be You wouldn't know that. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. don't know if through your you know, investigation that you were told that or something. No. Okay. I'm all set then. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Okay, thank you. So that was our presentation. Uh, what I suggest now is that we do follow along the agenda, go to approval of minutes, then the reports and questioning of the finance director, and then we can get to approving the audit as it was presented tonight. So with that, we are looking at the regular meeting minutes of June 9th, 2021. <coughs> Bless you. I will start, I'll start with just a, a correction, Karen, on the very first page, call meeting to order. I believe the first sentence is accurate, but I think the remaining verbiage might have been a copy and paste yeah. error. So, yeah. okay. And I took it out and then I, I had already printed this and didn't change the page. Yeah. So, so that was the only correction that I saw, just a copy-paste error. Okay, great. Does anybody else want to know any corrections to the minutes? Okay, so do I have a motion to approve the minutes as corrected? I'll move to um, approve the East Line Board of Finance regular meeting minutes of uh, June 9, 2021 uh, as amended. Thank you, do I have a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 600. With that, we'll move on to the report from our finance director. Um, I think the first thing I'd like to do is just to um, thank you for all the items So the first item I'd like to do is just go over um, the items that I included in your green package, the green folders. So the first item is um, an audit corrective action plan for the um, recommendations uh, made by the auditor. So I list them as they were in order um, on the document along with um, you know some comments on each one and then there's a you know a completion date and um, so if the completion date says to be determined that's it is what it is um, uh, one item we've actually finished already um, several of the items where I've indicated to be determined that's because I need to meet with um, other um, individuals within the town um, discuss the issue and come up with um, a policy to go forward on those items. Um, and then there's a couple that of the items that will be taken care of when um, the trial balance are presented to the auditors to conduct this year's order, um, you know, audit, and they're marked accordingly. So I just wanted to let you know that that's what the document is, um, and. I can just at this point include it monthly or um, in your packet so you can take a look at it, see any changes that might, you know, you know how we're going forward with it. 
Um, then one of the comments, um, the you know, this was a first year audit, so they um, had um, an IT audit. So as a result of that, they put together a report. So um, I did put a copy of that report um, in your uh, in your packet. So you know, they discussed the review that they did, the findings um, that they had, and recommendations um, that they've made to the town um, going forward. So at the end, I believe there are four recommendations. Um, so. My, you know, my plan is I'm going to sit down with the IT manager, review them, and discuss, you know, how to move forward on those. But I want, I thought you should have a copy of that um, that report. And they did give separate reports to the town and a separate one to to the board of ed. Um, I did put in an updated fund balance report because um, the calculation of um, the percent of the the percent of the unassigned fund balance, I, I the I didn't update the, the calculation, so I fixed that and put an updated copy in your report. Um, I did put a, a revenue and expenditure summary for the month of June, like revenues or expenditures that were in excess of $10,000, just so that you, you had it and I wouldn't <clears throat> have to read them all off to you um, when talking about um, our um, results. Um, I also put in there um, an updated copy of the public safety building um, uh, worksheet for you. Um, we're having, there's another meeting uh, tomorrow evening, and so um, there was a more recent copy, so I just put that in there for you. Um, also, there's a copy of the CCM toolkit that they've provided relative to use of the American um, Rescue Funds. And then the last item is um, the, the Board of Selectmen. Um, Acted on uh, several items at their meeting last week, and they are not—they were not included on your agenda this evening. So, at some point, the board um, may elect to have a special meeting, and and I just thought you, you would already have the supporting documentation. I could email you an agenda. No one would have to come in and pick up hard copies, so that they're um, they're in in the folder. Um, so I don't know. Next, if you want to, do you want to talk about um, our? Um, year-end numbers at this point, or would you like to discuss the, the audit first? I think I would like to discuss the audit since we're on that topic still. Yep. Um, thank you, Anna, for putting together this corrective action plan. I was going to ask for this this evening, and you have cut me off at the pass. So, so good on you for doing that. Um, this is really important. This is going to be a tool that we use to make sure that things are actually being accomplished going forward. I would like to see another column here that clearly identifies who the Board of Selectmen is tasking with the particular item on the list. Is that going to be you? On Are you the ultimate uh, responsible party for ensuring that all of this gets done? Or is some of this going to be farmed out to to various Board of Selectmen members or perhaps the first Selectmen, who is actually responsible for making sure that each one of these action items will be implemented. And I would like to not see TBD as the target date for these. I would actually like to see some sort of target date for these to be yeah, completed. Uh, well, clearly. So the reason I put um, TBD on, the items where the TBD is like, the information technology. Um, I, I need to uh, meet with our IT manager, discuss the report, and determine. Okay, what are we going to do to to um, you know Im implement the recommendations, and how much time is it going to take us? So once I have that meeting, then I can put a date in there. And, okay, and that's for. Um, okay, so the the policies and procedures manual. Um, I, I do have one, and actually, um, I went and I looked. I had started working on it in March of last year, and then COVID hit, and so that kind of got put to the side. So it's a policy, and I actually found that two different municipalities, municipalities had the same policy and, and just modified it to, to their needs. So I thought that was a good place for us to start so that we have, I can have a document. So that, so I, I kind of like need to see, you know, 
set some time aside to work on it, see how much I can get accomplished in, in blocks of time, and figure out when I think I might be able to get it completed. Um, so while we're on that subject of updating the accounting policies and procedures, certainly this is not a new item. I think we've been talking about this for seven years. So you had provided the Board of Finance with a list of various policies and procedures in the mm -hmm. past, right? So all of those are identified as to what needs to be reviewed, what needs to be updated. So if you could work off of that list and provide that to us and add the additional recommendations that the auditor, that they had this evening, for example, they did request, not request, they recommended that we have a whistleblower policy in place. So that's a very specific action item that I believe belongs on this list. And maybe you won't get to it by December 30th of this year. But let's at least put a target date on that about when we can expect to see that and identify who will be responsible for developing that. And I'm not thinking that you would be responsible for all of this work but I would expect that you would work with the first selectman to identify who is responsible for, cre for updating or creating where none exists the various policies, particularly the ones that were recommended by the auditors this in, in our reports tonight. And I won't go through and list all of them. Um, we all have the 13 recommendations. Yeah, so um, in, in any event, if like, you know, like between now and the next meeting, if you kind of look at the action column, it'll give what my thought process is relative to um, working on them. And as I said, you know, there are, um, like for example, the comment on performance bond maintenance. Well, I need to sit down with um, the departments that take in the performance bonds. Um, they take them in um, and um, it, you know, like now I have something that was written as an audit comment. So it's like, okay, you have to take this seriously. And I mean, I have some ideas as to how I think it should work and mm -hmm. get them to buy into it. Now, I'm not sure if they're going to want to bring such a policy before um, their commissions. So if, if they, if they want to do that, then that means it's going to extend the period of time in which it gets completed. But I need to meet with them first so that we can discuss that and then and then figure it out. So as I, I start doing that, then my plan is to fill those dates in. Mm -hmm. So that's why okay. they say TBD at this point. No, no, I understand. I understand that you need some time to complete the grid. But I also understand that the management letters were uh, issued on May 13th, and it is now July 14th. So a couple of months have passed already. Um, and so I would just like to see some accelerated effort in this regard. Understood. Okay, thank you. Anna, I, I have a question if I sure. could jump in. You had mentioned a few moments ago that one of these is already taken care of, so which did I miss what that was? Um, or? The human resource. Oh, number four. Number four. Number four. Number four. Number four. Actual date. Yeah. Okay. See. See. Okay. Thank you. And and then I'll also note that um, on the um, IC um, 2020 the procurement policy, um, I you know I did speak with um, you know Ms. Stevens from the Board of Ed, and she does have a draft policy in place at this point in time. It's just a matter of. Um, uh, dealing with the subcommittees that they have at the board relative right. to when it actually gets implemented, but she she already does have a draft policy on that. Which one were you talking about just then? Oh, no, number three. three. Oh, number three. Okay. Right. Just a quick question on that too. Um, number three, it says with regards to, I guess, the uniform guidance procurement standards. You obtained a policy from the city who has one in place. Is that a, a a place that is similar in size to East Line? Excuse me, no. Um, actually, um, it's a policy from a city. Um, so, like, rel so, like, the issue occurred with um, one of the Board of Ed grants, but as a result of that occurrence, the auditor is saying, hey, both the town and the board, you need to look at this. Okay. So, um, that's 
you know, that's why it's like, okay, so I obtained a copy because I need to, to look at like a specific policy and then determine, okay, does it make sense to write it as a standalone or take our existing purchasing policy and maybe just, um, you know, makes, tweak it a little bit. So, so that's kind of um, what, what that's all about. To see what changes you need to make, okay. That, that, if I could say, that looks like what Avon did actually. They just, they went through an audit and literally put the language in there. But again, most policies, you know, cover the, you know, cover or, or cover the situations where um, you might be using state money or federal money. You know, the source of money isn't your own local tax money, and uh, which we do in our own policy. Yeah. So, and it's just incidentally, if I could say, a lot of those code of federal regulation subject matters, all the all the topics covered. They are all covered in our policy. It's just a matter of when you're using federal dollars, this is the particular way they want you to do it. And they want you to refer to that. And the contract in question is necessarily going to have those regulations um, referenced or attached. So it's just a kind of formality to throw it into a policy and make sure that, um, you know, a new person on the block, some, you know, similar situation where you have new personnel who's not used to it or whatever. Use the, use the policy that um, highlights the issue when federal money is involved. Sounds like to me too that they want everything in one place. Like yes. you may have policies or procedures yes. for different things yes. located in different areas and they seem to want everything to be yeah. in one place where they can just say, okay, this is, yes. this is it, yeah. you know. So are you all set with the list? No, on the second page, Anna, please, internal controls over financial reporting. This this seems to be where the material weakness was identified. Mm -hmm. And you are suggesting monthly, quarterly, and annually that management will conduct a detailed review by reconciling asset and liability accounts. In that instance, who is management? Well, that would be like myself. Do you have any staff that could assist you in that regard? So um, f for certain accounts, I can, you know, a assign a particular account to a staff member and, and have them, like, review the details and then give me, um, you know, a synopsis report of anything that maybe doesn't, uh, like, like we maybe, you know, like, um, it, like a z an account that should be a zero base account if it ends up with some kind of a balance, like, okay, why do we have this balance? Like, it can assign that to a particular staff member to, um, to research that for me. Okay. So there is staff available to help you in that regard. Okay. So with the procurement policy and the recommendations that uh, the auditors had for us this evening, is it would it be prudent to, to get the old purchasing policy subcommittee together again to update that document? I think we still have some members here that were involved with that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I could I could help out with that. I you know I I think the issue it's to some extent was that um, the board of ed didn't have its maybe version of our policy, you know, as well. So, um, but yeah, we can, we can, we can work on that. And I th it, it, it's really, it seems at this point a pretty simple solution. Um, if, if we feel that we need to add that in there or some clarifying language, you know, um, so we can take a look, you know, at some of the towns that have that language, you know, in their policies. Okay, so this will become a regular document at our <coughs> uh, monthly meetings. And if you can make those additional columns, that would be terrific. Okay. Does anybody else have questions for Anna regarding the audit? this evening <coughs> if there are no additional comments we can move on
why don't we why don't we go next to uh, <coughs> I guess at our last meeting Anna we had asked you to kind of distill the information from um, the parameters of which we could use the ARP funds is there is there any synopsis that you have for us relative to this document um you know what actually I I you know I I I didn't rem I didn't see that as a note to myself um, on the ARP funds, but I did knowing that um, you know we have the, you know having the funds that we have um, and when CCM made this tool available, I just thought the board would like a copy so that at their leisure they would be able you know to take a look at it and um, you know just to get like wrap to be able to you know wrap your heads around it okay so then I would suggest to the board members that uh, we read the rescue plan toolkit and if we have specific questions then we can uh, bring them up at our next meeting okay you're not going to receive any ARP funding requests without it being vetted by the board of selectmen and um, the Board of Selectmen have uh, been going through CCM training, uh, Council of Government training. I met with Congressman Courtney on this, his staff, uh, and he had a town meeting last night on the subject. Um, and, um, and our town attorneys have put out um, and, and looked at the last six requests that are actually uh, in your hands now um, to be approved or not um, and have been vetted through that process as well. So nothing ever will come to the Board of, Select, uh, board of Finance, nor will it uh, on any subject, without it being vetted first by the Board of Select. So um, you can feel confident in that. Well, we, we wouldn't expect that it would come from anywhere else. Of course, of course. So you, I th did they get the packets of the CCM? Did you yes, get the, yeah, so yeah, look through that. That's, that's the latest. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been assured that things will change over the years. We have until 2026 to spend it. We have some immediate needs that are, again, have been forwarded to the Board of Finance for review. Uh, I'll speak to that later. And, um, and, and more, more to come. Okay. If I could say thanks, Mark. Just uh, this um, this is a pretty good tool because I've been looking for something like this, and it's only recently on that CCM website, so that's great. And um, there's also on that same website, um, I think it's the National League of Cities has um, sort of a Q and A. Um, in addition to obviously going to the to the act itself, the federal act itself, but um, so, but you know, a, a pretty good overview. And this seems to cover a lot of the different topics. This, besides a good summary, there's a nice um, Q and A at the end. You know, sort of answer some some common questions. And I was speaking with Anna earlier, and she had mentioned that the people that put this together it was a good group um, from a variety of um, with a variety of skill sets. Um, and one in particular, uh, Carrie Olson, who is a you know well-known municipal attorney, and um, did a great job during the pandemic with exec certain uh, revising certain executive orders. So um, there's some good clarity in the document. So I think that'd be helpful. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any questions on the actual monthly financial reports that Anna provided to us this evening? And remember that for the month of June, they are draft reports. Um, uh, we have some revenues that um, are, are going to be considered receivables they're um, not all booked at this point in time and then of course through the end of August we will continue um, to make payments on what are, what are called payables meaning goods or services that were received on or before June 30th that we don't pay the bills until after June 30th so this will all be going on during um, the next 60 days 
So I heard the auditor say this evening that their preliminary audit is going to begin in the next few weeks. Do they do you have a specific date on the calendar? Um, yes, they are coming in the last week of the month. Of July? Of July. So does that mean that we could um, expect a close by December of this year? That will definitely be my plan. Any questions on the monthly financials? If there are none, uh, let's move on to the information that we requested. We received it in our packet. It's the budget summary on the public safety building. Anna provided to us a listing of all the expenditures against the budget. Has everybody had an opportunity to look at that? Okay, Anna, I just had a couple of questions um, on the spreadsheet that you sent to us. The Noble Base contract, $3,279,750, that differed from an original base contract of $198,000. Is that due to the add-on of the elevator? That, that's probably what, what it was. So this... this um, the, the spreadsheet is a document that um, the building committee um, um, prepared and uses because it helps it helps them to track and make sure that they they don't over overspend for the project so um, I wanted to kind of um, reconcile all the change orders that they have approved over time to the noble contract so I kind of modified it a little bit to be you know to uh, be more useful so like you'll notice um, uh, in in the um, the fifth column where it says noble change orders they're all like there's a number there and and then you, you'll see there's a, several of them listed and then a total amount so that um, when they when we get subsequent payment applications it lists the, the various change orders that get executed in the dollar amounts and the way it was previously presented they, the num they were all over the place. So I just made it so that it, it was, you know, easier to, to work with. And then I made some, you know, some notes just for clarification points. But anyway, so as I said, this is really a tool that, um, you know, the chair put together so that it, it helps the committee um, keep track of uh, what they're spending. Mm -hmm. And then I also gave you the um, reports from our system, a budget summary, and um, also the details of all the charges that have been made against the budget accounts. Mm -hmm. I just had a few more questions on this uh, building committee spreadsheet. Sure. The contingency account, it didn't go up by much, but it went up by $1,485 from the original budget of 308000 It's now 309661 Just wondering why that was increased by f almost $1,500. That you know, um, I, I, when, so, I wanted this to tie out to the budget, and the budget was the four, four point, you know, four million three hundred ninety-five thousand. So when I had all the numbers up, it was it was off by that amount. So I so it's a plug. I I, I plugged it in. Okay, okay, that's fine. As long as we understand that, that's that's fine. Uh, the remaining contingency. Is a deficit of thirty-eight thousand dollars. I believe when we met last month, there was um, a surplus of fifty-five hundred left. So, which items in the span of thirty days? So, if you look at like remaining, so based on all you know, like the pluses and minuses, then you have a negative balance. However, under that is also um, potential um, potential savings identified about sixty-five thousand. I made. I made a few little notes over to the side for the different things that the committee talked about. And then, so then it's like potential funds available, you know, the $27,952. However, if you also look, there are some items that are identified that haven't been approved. So like, um, uh, you know, if you look in the column with the approved date, 
dollar amounts with, are things that have been presented to the building committee, but they haven't approved them to move forward because they're waiting for you know different things to play out at this point. So that's kind of how this is all set up. If that makes sense. No. <laughs> However, but one like thing I, I will point yeah. out to you is if you look at the um, the budget summary from our accounting system, um, the account number, it's um, uh, renovations, uh, furniture, fixture, and equipment, public safety building, it shows that there's still a balance of a little over $121,000. And that has to do with... Um, Until a change order is approved, signed, and, and submitted to us, we don't increase the encumbrance for noble construction. So some of it has to do with that and the fact that maybe not everything is approved yet, so we don't encumber, we don't issue a PO until everything is approved. So it's, like I said, it's a work in progress and um, So um, the appropriations that we've made in the past couple of months from the operating budget are not reflected on this schedule, correct? No, they are not. If you look at your... Should they be is, I guess, my question. Uh, so well, for example, last month we approved a vacuum, a floor cleaning machine, yeah. and repairing the sinkhole in the driveway for 17000 Yeah, you'll, in the general fund, those funds are encumbered. So it's reflected in, in the general fund report. This is, you know, um, you know, just tracking of the of the project funds. Um, you know, well, wouldn't that, that be provided. part of this project, though? So the building committee or don't have anything to do with the things we've Sure, they do. It's a when we when we asked the question about the vacuum cleaner, it was specific to that building. It's specific to the building. But So this is just from the building committee. Okay. So we'll have to make some, uh, you know, off book entries just to, to track it then. So thank you. I'm, I'm happy to do that. All right. Does anybody else have any questions on the public safety building uh, reports provided to us? Okay, there's no further questions on that. I think that was the last item that we had to discuss with the finance director. So I'll, I'll call one more time for any questions for the finance director on anything that we've discussed tonight. Okay, there's no further questions. Moving on to new business, which is approved the June 30th, 2020 audit as presented. The presentation was made. Um, we can make the motion to approve it, second it, and open it up for further discussion if required. I'll make the motion to approve the June 30th, 2020 audit as presented tonight on July 14th, 2021 to the Board of Finance. Thanks, Ann. Is there a second? second? Thanks, Rich. Is there any further discussion? I would just say I think it was, you know, um, good that uh, Anna made up the, the list showing, you know, the 13 recommendations and how um, we're going to be, you know, making the changes and, um, mm -hmm. along with the recommendations. positive step in the right direction. I will say that I'm very uncomfortable with the trajectory of the findings that, that we are receiving. Um, these are the most significant findings that we've had in the past nine years that I've been on the board. So I certainly don't like the direction. Um, 
and I do have concerns and that's why if I'm asking very pointed questions and asking for very specific target dates and assigned responsibilities that that is why I don't feel comfortable continuing to appropriate funds for different purposes when the audit letter says that management is not able to make the best management decisions based on the financial uh, information that they are receiving. So I read, I read comments like that and I just find that very concerning. So I think just as a few years ago, I think the only people on the board at that time were myself and Ann Santoro, perhaps John Birmingham, when we had issues with the purchasing policy, we really had to take a hard stand and make sure that that policy got reviewed uh, because we're responsible for appropriating taxpayer dollars. And if we don't have information before us that we have confidence in, uh, that's really on us. So I'm, I'm going on the record saying I don't like the trajectory of the findings of this latest audit. I think we can do better. I think we must do better, and I think it's this board's responsibility to hold management accountable to ensure that we are producing accurate financial information on which management can make solid decisions. So while I will vote to uh, approve the audit as it was presented tonight, I would like the record to show I am not satisfied with the results and the findings of the audit and we really need to be cognizant of that plan and keep on top of it. Any other comments from the board while the motion is open? I would agree with what you said. I, I think it was very concerning and I think that, you know, at this point it looks like we're moving in the right direction. Um, to you know, remedy the the, the situation, and I, I think it's something that needs to be dealt with um, as soon as possible. Thank you, Ann. Anybody else? Any comments from the remaining board members? You know, I think that uh, over the years, I've seen every time we've had an audit presented to us, <coughs> uh, has been deficiencies in the budgets over the years. And we have a new auditor this year who have a new, more or less, a new set of eyes on our finances in the town of East Line for the budget. And I think they have picked up a few things maybe that weren't picked up in the past. But I think uh, with the, the uh, listing of the 13 recommendations, and Anna is going to be on top of it, I think we're moving in the right direction to, to uh, take care of those recommendations. Uh, and I'm sure. Uh, I don't know if it'll be done by the end of the year, but I'm sure that uh, they will be taken care of from what I've seen in the past. There's probably more recommendations this year than in the past, but uh, I, I'm confident that uh, there'll be a positive uh, result as we go on in, you know, in the future. Thank you, John. Thank you for your view. Yeah. If, I, if I could say, I, you know, I, I, I agree with uh, what John just said and also want to point out that um, when we had our auditor RSM during my, the previous years and been on the board since 2017, um, I think we did a reasonably good job of addressing their uh, letter to, uh, to management and um, there were a couple of things that, you know, went from year to year. But in general, I think, you know, um, there was a, a very good effort put forth to, to correct um, those things. So we, we've been following that advice for, for, for those years. And now we have a new auditor um, with some, um, you know, new thoughts about uh, our process and our accounting and so forth. So, yeah, I think we can handle it. I'm not, I, I think that uh, these are good points made and um, well delivered uh, uh, presentation really appreciated it um, and I think we can we can manage it as a town so 
I'm, you know, look, and I'll look forward to working with Anna on our little, our little addendum <laughs> that we that we may or may not need to do. So thanks. Anna, I'm I'm just a little curious. Can do you have a specific example of a finding from the RSM audit that has been addressed and remedied? Um, well, I'm trying to think about. Uh, we had um, actually, I, I have it here, um, and actually, I'd have to go back and look at some of the things. But I do remember um, something with the lunch fund. Uh, something with the lunch fund we had. Um, there was a there was a couple of things. Um, if you give me a minute, I just I literally have to go back and take a look at my at, you know the, the actual letter. But um, I felt like the the one area that and it's reappeared here with um, our accounting policies that and procedures manual. I think that was sort of a, a repeat. Um, but I but um, I felt as though we we had covered s some of the topics. And Anna might remember better than I at this point. But, um, well, I. I I have to disagree a little bit on the policies and procedures. That has been a recurrent finding. Oh yeah, no, I, that's what I was saying. Yeah, and the recurrent. auditors. No, I agree with you on that. Yeah, and the auditors pointed out in this Again, report yes. that nothing has been revised yeah. in no, the past I, year. Yeah, that's that was my point. That yeah. that was an example of something that hadn't been. And, right, because I'm looking for examples of things that have that been. have been. Yeah, but um. I'd have to, if you, you have to give me a couple of minutes to go back and look at that audit letter. And, uh, but it, I didn't think that anything had, uh, other than that, maybe. Well, I'm a little bit curious about the water and the sewer fund. It seems to me that that has come up in previous audits. And mm -hmm. there's still that audit finding in the books. Yeah. So I, you know. I, I don't know what to say about that other than that's a, a repeat finding, that, uh, another example of something that has and not the, been addressed. The water and sewer was another issue. The, this one here has to do with um, late fees that are on, on their accounts. It, it's, it's not just late fees. It has to do with uh, delinquent accounts and no policy or procedure in place for collection of those accounts. And uh, it's my recollection that the... Uh, delinquent accounts are growing by leaps and bounds. And um, so it's very concerning to me if we don't have a policy in place, how much larger is that going to grow before we address that? If I could, I, I did find the RSM letter from last year and I know it there was uh, of concern the purchase orders and invoices. We had had that issue a couple of years. And then by virtue of the purchasing policy and highlighting, I believe, uh, you know, uh, um, and procedures to follow there to just avoid that, that trap of having, mm -hmm. you know, uh, having a sort of inverse order of things occasionally there. So that was, I think that was, and that's been a good thing because when we did have to review our purchasing policy a year later, we did ask Anna, about that trend and it really seemed to have subsided. So that was a good thing. And then um, student activity policy, that was the thing I was trying to remember. Um, there was one instance where a bank deposit slip wasn't maintained or something and then that was, that po their, their procedures internally were reviewed and that was corrected. So um, census data, there was a point about that and that, that became a non-issue. So those were examples and I don't have the previous year's um, RSM letters, but I do know that the, the carryovers in Camille, you're correct about that, were, were the things about the certain policies and procedure manuals, like particularly mm -hmm. the accounting one. So right. it'd right. be good to get that going. And Anna sounds like she's got something mm -hmm. cooking on that. So mm -hmm. that's great. Yep, very good. Okay, so I am just wondering if um, is, it's at all possible to, you know, we talked about assigning some responsibilities to that grid, if it's at all possible to have subcommittees formed by the Board of Selectmen to tackle some of these policies, um, since the Board of Selectmen are the policy makers of the town, is it possible to form a subcommittee to help Anna address some of these? Thank you. Okay. Any other comments from the board? If not, we have a motion on the floor. Um, all those in favor of approving the June 30th, 2020 audit as presented, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Motion carries 600. And with that, I imagine that this will be uploaded to the website. The audit report will be updated mm -hmm. on the website available for mm -hmm. the public to view. Mm -hmm. And do you know when that might be accomplished, Anna? I mean, I, we can get, get that done in the next week. Okay. So just a question, what would be uploaded? Just the, the letter or the entire? The report. The actual the reports. The reports in the management letter. The management letter to the Board of Finance. Setting forth the there's, recommendations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a management advisory letter and an audit communication letter together with the actual three booklets, the single state audit, the federal state audit, and the financial statement audit. So all of that information will be PDF'd and uploaded just like it was in prior years. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. That concludes the new business. Do we have any old business that uh, any Board of Finance members would like to discuss? There's no old business to discuss. We can move on to public discussion. I'll speak as public discussion as the first selectman's report was removed from the agenda this evening, um, which is a general reoccurring event on a regular meeting. Um, but it gives me a chance to speak to you tonight. Anna, uh, Ann, thank you for acknowledging the hard work that Anna has put in with those audits over the year um, and, and pulling up those few examples, uh, just a few examples. Um, remember that Anna is only a 75% employee of this town. Only 75% of her 40-hour work week goes to the town of East Lyme. She's also employed by the Water and Sewer Commission. We don't have a full-time employee as a, f as a finance director. We put an awful big burden on her with a very small staff compared to other towns of our size. I don't want to make this ugly, but I have been in committee meetings for 22 years, and I've never seen a chair speak to a, a department head like that. Um, it, you are a committee of a whole here. You're all equal. Just because the chair runs the meeting, she doesn't give the orders. And I just ask you, you all, to work together as a committee. It's not the, it's not the board of Alberti. It's the board of finance, and you all have an equal say. Now the board, the board chair was given, um, forwarded by the Board of Selectmen, um, our annual appropriations, millions of dollars that are to be appropriated that, is, that um, you all approved in your budget and then sent to the taxpayers, and they've voted it and approved it. And now department heads are expecting to be able to get to work. The citizens are expecting this work to be done. We have department heads and teams out there we have the Board of Education who has a, a technology budget that needs to be approved. They generally do all this during the summer. I read in the paper today about the engineering uh, study we're looking for for the pool. Um, and there's several other, the, the cop cars, you know, uh, and, and several, several other things. So uh, you, you by, by our um, uh, charter, have 30 days to act. Uh, on this, so obviously the, the chair will be booking another special meeting this month. Um, so I would hope that that would come with some warning because our department heads have to come. You're going to have questions about some of these appropriations, even though you already had the questions answered. But there are new items on there, or especially the ARP funding and all that. And I have department heads who are also on vacation and living their life, but they want to be available. This is their life. This is their passion. They want to come here and serve as you serve the town of East Lyme. So do they. Um, so I ask that you, uh, before you leave tonight, schedule that special meeting so we can get on with the, the, the business of government and do the work that we need to do. Um, I, I know it's late. I know you had a, not a long meeting, an average meeting tonight. And I know that would have put a huge burden on it. But we do need to know when that meeting will be scheduled. Thank you for, service, thank you for your service to the town.
Thank you, Mark. With that, I'll open it up to board comments. And I will go last. So if anybody else would like to uh, speak, now's the time. <coughs> yes, Rich. Yes, I, I did see a comment in the New London Day from a, a citizen in regards to town meetings and the accessibility of Zoom hybrid meetings for those who may face some physical restrictions or limitations. And I recall in the budget that we approved that there are funds for such purposes. Um, it, it sometimes, well, for a personal example, I, I wanted to just watch the Board of Selectmen meeting last week, and I could not find it on the television. I had thought I had heard a department head mention about YouTube presentations that you could watch them simultaneously to the live meetings. I couldn't find that. Um, I think as we experienced bringing in people remotely through the COVID epidemic pandemic this last year, I think we need to be cognizant that we have citizens that for certain meetings and especially the town meetings where major items are approved for expenditures, that we do try to resume a, a hybrid meeting as we did for the town meeting for the budget. And that, that's all. Thanks, Rich. I, I'm not sure that that was part of our operational budget, um, but for the hybrid meetings, what I did recall uh, was a $400,000 appropriation request to spend ARP funds that came forward from the Board of Selectmen, of which $13,000 was uh, targeted for exa that exact purpose, hybrid meetings. Um, but that was not uh, that was withdrawn. The Board of Selectmen withdrew that so that they could get a better handle on what was appropriate to spend ARP funds on. So I do expect that that will come before this board again to vote on. I'm a proponent of that. I agree 100% with you that we need to make these meetings more accessible. So now in response to the First Selectmen's uh, comments during uh, the public discussion, there is a reason why I removed all of the uh, millions of dollars of appropriation requests for, from this evening's meeting. The first of which, depending on the participation of the board members, these meetings have been known to go on for at least three hours. So we are under a time constraint with the current sanitation department to make sure that our meetings end by 10. So I did feel that if we were going to discuss the audit for three hours, that there would not be time to go into, to properly vet millions of dollars of appropriations this evening. And that's why I elected to remove it from the meeting. Tonight's meeting was principally for the specific purpose of discussing the audit. The second reason, other than the time constraint for removing those items, was to get a better understanding from our auditors about the significance of the material weakness that they identified. I think we have a better understanding now, after hearing the presentation, of what that means. We know it's a significant, um, well, it, a material weakness is, is the most serious finding that an auditor has. That finding signifies a lack of control over over internal controls without proper internal controls we are exposed to quite frankly fraud um, it's it's spelled out in the management letter that without the proper internal controls you know uh hundreds of thousands of dollars could be at risk by perhaps employees that don't have the citizens, uh, uh, in, you know, interests in mind. Let's just say it that way. Um, do I think that's happening? I don't think so. Have we had prior instances where that has happened? Yes, twice in the past couple of years. Um, 
So I don't think, I think it's within this Board of Finance's right to withhold appropriation requests until we can ensure the people that we work for, the citizens, the taxpayers of this town, that those appropriations are made in the most appropriate manner and that we are doing our due diligence to ensure that that is happening. If you recall two months ago in April, we sent an appropriation request back to the Board of Selectmen who said the accounting was beyond reproach. Nothing was wrong with what they did, but they agreed to change the, uh, the actual accounting of it regardless. And then tonight we find the material weakness in financial reporting. So that's not to say, um, I believe that the Board of Selectmen are doing the best that they can I, I am not sure that they have the expertise on that board to deal with these issues. That's why we're here as a, another level of, uh, just another level of overview. That's our role. So I don't feel like we should be pressured into making decisions based on a timeline that doesn't ensure the absolute best representation to taxpayers. With that being said, I did say I was happy that Anna produced the document that she did, the actual action plan. That was another thing I was looking for this evening before we moved forward. It's done. I'm happy to see it. I'm happy to make a special meeting um, to listen to the appropriation requests that the Board of Selectmen would like to move forward to us. And we can do that tonight. Um, I was going to wait until after the next Board of Selectmen meeting so that I could address them personally and tell them of my concerns. But I understand that they only are having one meeting in July and one meeting in August. So they won't be here next week. Um, they have a light summer schedule. Uh, so we will have to we will have to schedule our meeting without the benefit of being able to address them directly. So with that in mind, I would suggest everybody look at their calendars if you have it, and maybe we can come up with a date. Since the Board of Selectmen uh, are not having their regularly scheduled meeting next week on the 21st, I would imagine this room is available. It is. We can convene at 7 p.m. if that's convenient. If not, we can look at the 28th. While the Charter says that we have 30 days on which we can act upon a Board of Selectmen recommendation, that doesn't always happen. So things do need to get rescheduled on occasion. It's not out of the ordinary. When, it, when are the 30 days up? Do, does anybody know? Do you know, Anna? Um, it would be, it's the Thursday after the, um, the Board of Finance August meeting. If it's based on um, cal uh, calendar days. So our August meeting would be August like 11th, you're saying? Our next regularly scheduled Board of Finance meeting is August 11th. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm free next week if you want to have a special meeting. I'm not free on the 21st. I'm not, I'm actually not free on the 21st either. Yeah, I prefer the 28th. About the twentieth, Tuesday. Twentieth is a Wednesday. The seventh is our. What about the the twentieth? The twentieth, the Tuesday. Yes, that's that works. Is that any? Is nope. anybody free for the twentieth? I'm not available on the twentieth. Okay. So next week, this room is available all week. Mondays usually. About the week after. No, okay. Any other day of next week, like thir uh, th Thursday, <coughs> excuse me, the 22nd? No, we have a, a 
a, a meeting for the DTC yeah, that night, meeting. so we're not going to be available. The 27th? Does that work? Yeah, the, the Water and Sewer Commission has this one. They meet here? Both Anna and I go to that meeting. Okay. What about the 28th? Did somebody say? Yeah. 28th should work. That's Does that put us outside the 30 day window, Anna? Yeah, when, when was it? Um, their meeting was okay. July 7th. Was that correct? The meeting of the Board of Selectmen was the 7th? It's Correct. Your rec papers, the paper you look up that Anna gave you. Oh. You'll see when it got transferred to you and when it got approved. Yeah, it was July 7th. Okay. Yeah, that was the name. I just listened to it. So, so we should be fine. Is July 28th open? So if, if the Board of Selectmen are meeting on August 4th, couldn't they couldn't they make these motions again on the 4th and then we could just handle it on August 11th? I mean, we have 30 days on which to act on their action, but if they're going to meet on August 4th, why can't we just meet, why can't we well, handle the request on August 11th? Because then it's past That's the past 30, 30 days. days. Yeah, but I'm saying if they meet on the 4th, then it starts a new, then it starts a new window. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, I think some of the items on that, you know, that they did appropriate, um, that they approved for appropriation for uh, yeah. back in on the seventh. This is Board of Selectmen. Some of them, are, I would think, are time sensitive in terms of like the pool roof issue, mm -hmm. um, because mm -hmm. if something's going to be done, it's got to be done before school starts. Yeah. Um, there's right. a number of things here. Um, I did listen to that meeting just yeah. to know, and it did seem as though, I mean, there could be a delay, but it, it seemed to me not a, a significant delay w w would not be helpful at all because I think some of the quotes that they've gotten for some of the items, the under that acquisition program, I don't know when they might expire. There's a number of you know things that may be in jeopardy, let's say, mm. if we don't move sooner than later. What about July 28th? Is, is the room open then? Yes. Nobody has a meeting on the 4th. Is anybody Instead. available the 28th? I'm free on the I'm 28th. Free. I'm OK on the 28th as well. Okay. Yeah. You're OK. You're So don't forget, if you're going to be long-winded, you're not going to get through the student your agenda. <laughs> If you're going to do these, you're going to be stuck again. Right. Yeah. yeah. Let's do the what, what was that, Karen? Well, we I, have, um, I didn't hear the concern. Oh, this is the 28th of yeah, so July, so. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So if you were going to put this on your next agenda. You, oh, yeah. No, so that's August agenda. Yeah, no, I was yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's yeah. too late. And we're just yeah. discussing yeah. those. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Correct. Just rolling that. I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, why don't we just. No, I think we already said we wouldn't put it on our yeah. next regularly scheduled right. meeting. Are you around? around? We already said that. So special meeting. Are you around? I think so. Or, you know, um, okay. there's no meetings that week of the 26th? There's the 27th is water and sewer that Hannah and I go to. So we could do Monday the 26th. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm I not. can't. Oh, yeah. you can't. Okay. No. Yeah. What about Monday the 19th? No, 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 I can't do that. I can't do Mondays. Why not just Wednesday the 28th? Yeah, well, Wednesday well, that's that's that works for all of us. I'm just trying to see if there's a sooner date that we oh, can get see. together. Okay, if I it's understand. that time sensitive, I'm yeah. just trying to find a better solution. But all right, what's the date today? Today's the 14th, right? You said the today's tomorrow, the yeah, it's too soon. What we could do this evening is uh, vote to add an item onto tonight's agenda and at least get the Board of Education out of the way um, to make the next meeting that we have shorter. So the, 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 the you know, the items, mm -hmm. um, yeah. there are several items on the agenda that all require a town meeting. Mm -hmm. so oh, so you want to make sure they all get up. Yeah. They need to be so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Public, yeah. Published. Yeah. Okay. okay, gotcha. Yeah. So, I mean, is the 28th? Right, the 28th. Time. Yeah. Like that's yeah. that's going to work for yeah, the a lot of reasons. Yeah. yeah. Okay, the 28th. At 7 p.m. At 7 p.m. Okay. So the 28th? 28th. Yep. Yeah. 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 Ye
want to start earlier in case? 6.30 um, or 7? I think so. I don't think That's the only thing on the agenda are those appropriation requests. I can't imagine it would take more than an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Because most of them did get approved yeah. already. So it's, they've been vetted, they've yeah. been vetted already. Yeah. They've already been. Yeah. The like, yeah. 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 No they've already gone through. Yeah, okay. Sure. That the yeah. meeting was yeah, about an hour yeah. plus. Yeah. So exactly. Wednesday, July 28th. Sorry, Peter. Yes. Another Wednesday, yeah. 7 p.m. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Is there a second? I'll I'll second. I'll go ahead. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. All right. Thanks, everyone. Okay. We're not supposed to we're not supposed to be on ten o'clock because of the uh, custodian contracts. The custodial contract. You know.